Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram, and join our Facebook community for epic weekly giveaways. What's up, Airsofters? This is the brand new EMG Keltec RDB 17 AEG. This not M4 rifle has a really unique and interesting history. It comes from an equally unique and interesting company. Keltec's been around for a while. They're really well known for making super off the wall, outside the box weapons platforms like the KSG shotgun, the Sub 2000, and the newly announced P50. What even is this thing? The RDB-17 is Keltec's take on the 5.56 bullpup platform and has plenty of that trademark Keltec charm. The 17, by the way, refers to the barrel length, which is more barrel than M4 style AEGs out there. But this whole package is shorter overall. And that's the advantage of the bullpup platform. The mag is all the way behind the trigger and pistol grip, meaning the whole thing is just more compact. Also, the balance point on the RDB is much closer to the shooter, as you can see, which means less fatigue while aiming and less swing weight when it comes to maneuvering. There's no denying that bullpups have some advantages. That said, there aren't many bullpups available in Airsoft, so it's extra exciting when one comes to market for all you bullpup fans to lose your BBs over. The Keltec RDB is designed to be completely ambidextrous. It's got an ambidextrous fire selector, an ambidextrous mag release, and even an ambi trigger. Both hands. The fire selector is familiar, but with a much shorter throw, only about 20 degrees between modes. And it has a really nice tactile click between modes that you can feel even through gloves. My gripe here though, is that it can be somewhat difficult when you first start shooting it to find that semi-auto position because it so readily and freely goes into full auto. See what I mean? Now in airsoft, we don't need to worry about spent casings, the empty brass that gets ejected after firing a bullet. The real RDB would eject the spent casings downward back here behind the magazine well. That's what the name stands for. Rifle, downward ejecting, bullpup. This is in contrast to the RFB, the F being for forward ejecting. Just like the real thing, this AEG replica of the RDB features an impact resistant polymer forend with molded pick rail on the bottom for accessories like we've got here. A foregrip, a bipod, or a flashlight would work equally well here. Really though, I think the forend is really comfortable. Say what you will about the huge block pattern on the grip and on the forend. Uh, that's, you know, what Keltec is known for. But the shape of the forend is really nice and comfortable to use. It's not too chunky, still got plenty to hold on to. Just don't play with it too much. Here's a little test that we're gonna be doing to give you a better idea of some of the materials that the RDB is constructed from. I've got a magnet here with me, and I'm just gonna explore kind of the whole body to give you an idea of what, uh, what's what, really. Uh, so if we use the magnet, obviously, this is polymer, not sticking. Up top, we've got a full metal rail, but it's aluminum. So the magnet isn't sticking there. Nicely, they've got metal body pins, which stick there and there. Now, back here, we've got the gearbox. So the closer we can get to the gearbox, the more easily the magnet sticks. Back here, we've got an ambidextrous sling loop. Now that one's steel, but the one in front of it, that's aluminum. Magnet doesn't stick. The real question is, 
the receiver. Is it polymer? Is it aluminum? Would you look at that? It sticks. And that tells us that this receiver is steel. If you've been watching the channel for a little while, you'll know how I feel about bullpups. Simply put, I prefer standard M4s. Yes, I know how basic I am. And I'm sorry. But I'm always honest with you guys. And the RDB is one of those bullpups I've come across that doesn't look goofy. I'm not judging you bullpuppers out there. What I mean is, this one ain't so bad. I actually kind of like it. And me liking it has everything to do with the features they've built into the RDB-17. For one, it uses standard M4 mags. And that's huge. And in our testing, all the different mags we tried worked great. Even drum mags will fit. Here's a handy mag fit chart for your reference. The pistol grip is molded into the lower receiver, so you're kind of stuck with it, like many bullpup platforms. And I have no major complaints here. I just need to adjust myself to bullpup ergonomics, like having the magazine well dig right into my wrist every time I go to a low or high ready. It's not the most comfortable thing. The magazine release is, well, it's, it's not ideal, but it works. It's a simple bent piece of steel that flexes out of the way, out of the notch on either side when you depress it. Pretty slick. Now I've tried doing the speed reload where you kind of hit the mag release with your hand and I really haven't had much luck in practice aside from doing it here at the bench. And maybe with different magazines or more practice, I could get better at that. Either way, bullpups tend to favor the grip and rip style of reloading. Now, whenever I see a bullpup, the first thing I think is it must have an awful slushy, slidey, dual action trigger. That's where you'd be wrong with the RDB-17. It actually uses a micro switch right in here and then is wired to the MOSFET in the gearbox. No transfer bars, no mush, just a nice clicky trigger that you can really enjoy. Now, one feature that I'm definitely not crazy about is how you access the hop-up unit on this AEG. In order to adjust your hop, you need a long tool like a small flathead screwdriver. Then you reach up into the mag well and carefully turn this wheel. And it doesn't even tell you which direction is which. Now, personally, that seems kind of like a big oversight. And like it could have been accessed externally on either side, or maybe with the gas adjustment knob up here. Instead, this just kind of spins and does nothing. And since there are platforms that use a similar system that could rotate a hop up in the back, I don't know, I just kind of felt like I was left wanting more. But this hop up is the same one that's used in the Jack 9 with a detachable front end. So it's a part that's already available and it works well, even if it is a bit of a pain to adjust. The whole construction of the rifle is held together with just four pins. One, two, three, four. It's a little weird how it comes apart, but you get used to it and it really isn't so bad. There is a quick change spring guide on the back of the gearbox, which you can swap out without needing to take things down any farther. And you can also adjust your motor height from here as well. A quick note, we don't know for sure, but our techs wager that it might be compatible with aftermarket RDB rails, but don't hold it against us. The charging handle and assembly is quite sturdy with a polymer handle with a metal insert and a metal tube, but the spring that drives it is pretty anemic. To be clear, you shouldn't HK slap your handle. Maybe the weaker spring is there to help preserve the charging handle because we all know you're gonna slap it anyway. Oh, and this charging handle can be flipped to the other side. So you lefties can be equally disappointed. Speaking of being ambidextrous, this thing has three sling loops on either side. Here, here, and here. And this one loop on the top. So you can clip in pretty much wherever you want. There are no QD points, but you can add one on the top or the bottom rail if you want. Uh, or you can get one of those adapter things that allow you to convert rings to QD. Before we shoot this thing some more, we'd like to show you what's inside. Important note to anyone wanting to disassemble their RDB. Your best option is to likely remove the left half of the receiver first. That's the side with the trademarks. 
Things like the trigger board and the wiring are all secured to the right side of the shell. Ask us how we know. We learned this the hard way. Now the gearbox shell itself is proprietary, but it's heavily reinforced along the bottom of the window and out towards the front. Our techs are also impressed with how thick the top spine is. Overall, this gearbox should be able to withstand some pretty heavy abuse. Just about all of the major parts in the gearbox are standard spec. The spring guide itself is polymer, which is a part you might want to upgrade if you plan on pulling really heavy springs or making this thing go hard in the paint. The standard short type motor has ferrite magnets in it, but it still produces a very snappy trigger pull. The tappet plate and cylinder head are proprietary, but the nozzle is an M4 style at about 21 millimeters in length. The piston has all metal teeth with the second tooth shaved down, a ported polymer piston, and no thrust bearing. The cylinder is a Type 0, and the gears are standard Aries 18 to 1 ratio with a plastic delayer chip and a magnet for the hall sensor. These gears ride on 8mm bushings, but the bevel gear spins on an 8mm bearing. The trigger is proprietary, obviously, as is the MOSFET unit, but it is ready for an 11.1 volt LiPo battery right out of the box, without modification. Here's a better look at the trigger mechanism. On safe, the trigger is blocked from moving. Semi allows the trigger to move depressing this micro switch. When you go to full auto, the magnet in the switch moves over a hall sensor in the board and tells the MOSFET to keep firing. There is a lot going on here but the effect is achieved elegantly. To touch on battery storage, the RDB-17 is wired to the front, and so your battery compartment is underneath the handguard. By removing the front body pin, you can kind of rotate the handguard out of the way, which shows you both your wiring as well as the battery storage compartment, which is the handguard. Now this is a sample model, and it came with Tamiya's, but the production model is wired to Dean's like other EMG products. We found, despite the size of the handguard, that the battery storage compartment was somewhat limited. And we had the best results with an 11.1 volt, 1000 milliamp battery stick type like so. But you could also get away with the nunchuck style as long as the cells are reasonably flat and can lay down pretty flat in the battery compartment. This thing feels great and it's got respectable performance to match. At about 400 FPS and 18 rounds per second, great for outdoors on an 11.1 volt LiPo battery. Did I mention it feels great? For accuracy, hitting our 6-inch steel plate at 50 feet was a given. At our 100-foot test, we got about a 50% hit rate on the same 6-inch target. But body size targets at that range and a bit beyond are very doable. If you're thinking about upgrading this, our techs recommend a faster motor, like an ASG Infinity, an 11.1 volt LiPo battery, and nice bucking and a tight bore barrel, like the ones from Lambda. A tight bore barrel will boost your FPS a bit, so going with a lesser spring will not only help your rate of fire, but will keep you under that 400 FPS mark. Other than those recommendations, everything else is just about perfect. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be the first to admit that I'm not the biggest fan of bullpup platforms. The reality is, with all of the features, the comfortable ergonomics, and really, the ultimate ability for a bullpup platform like the RDB-17 to make you more effective on the field, especially in close quarters engagements, this puppy really has some great selling points to convert even an M4 fanboy like me over to the bullpup performance system. If you're interested in checking out the RDB-17 for all of its ergonomic and performance advantages, you can find it right here on our website at evic.com. Thanks for watching. No transfer bars, no mush, just a nice clicky trigger that you can really enjoy. You have a fresh magazine. Oh, it's a bullpup. Oh, God.